Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All right, everybody. Hail and welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast this week, brought to you by anchor and spotify and 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 the the wide intricate threads of the interwebs (laughs) um so yeah glad that you all could make it back today um got got a really fun discussion lined up for us today got some cedar incense burning um and i wanted to uh, take time today to kind of do a recap of um this past weekend's uh, shadow mood event um thought i would try to uh, it was it was kind of a last minute thing uh, and, and it was such a busy weekend i didn't get anybody from the hearth raven moon hearth uh to talk about it with me but um i definitely did want to mention it this week because it was such a great event i just want to say that right off the rip you know um the folks at raven moon hearth very very kind and generous hosts um and put on a wonderful welcoming community event family friendly um delicious food wonderful fellowship amazing ritual um if you guys follow listen to to anything that i do here or on my any of any platforms um, you know, I speak well of, of Raven Moon Hearth and, and Greg, their chieftain, Jared, um, Don, Michelle, everybody, um, a part of a part of that group. Um, I speak well of them, but it's it's not, uh, you know, because of flattery. It, it's, it's the most sincerest and genuine feeling that I have. They're they're a wonderful group of people. Um, so if you're ever thinking of attending one of their public events like Shadow Moon or Suna Bloat or any other um, public gathering that they host. Um, if you're thinking about it and you're maybe not quite sure, let me just give you assurance to definitely um, de- definitely make the, the trip. Um, we had somebody uh, from Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, that had come down for the weekend. Um, and I'm sure there were other people from other far reaches of the state and, and neighboring areas that, uh, that that came out for this for this long weekend event um and this is my first attend that this is my first time attending shadow moot specifically i've been to a couple of their you know suna bloat events and um those have always been a lot of fun but being there during this time of year the weather was great um just just all around you know i, I can't think of one part of of the whole thing that i thought was was negative you know so um with that being said i'm going to kind of give a recap of my experience at shadow um so i got there mid-afternoon on friday um they they start their uh three long three day long weekend three day long celebration on uh friday so 
the gates open on on Friday. The gates, I say, you know, you could start arriving on Friday. Um, they have they had a, a lovely dinner, um, kind of like you know cookout type stuff. You know, like uh, they had chili one night. They had pork chops, I think, one night. They had um, yeah. So like Friday night was chili, I think. Saturday night might have been pork chops, but they had like hamburgers, hot dogs, you know, stuff like that for for lunch. They they provide breakfast, three meals um, for for if you stay the whole weekend. If you want to come and just spend a day, um, you get one meal, you know, uh, while you're there. But it's it's the whole weekend you get fed three square meals, um, and it's a camping sort of, and it's it's kind of rustic camping, you know, that's camp outdoors, outhouse, porta potty sort of deal. Um, but I got there Friday afternoon, set up our camp. My wife arrived um, later on in the afternoon at, you know, around 4.30, 5 o'clock-ish, I believe. Um, following dinner, um, they had, uh, well, first of all, at, at the beginning of, uh, in, the, in the early afternoon, they do an opening ritual where they raise this, you know, spear uh, with their flag, their banner. Um, and the spear is a, um, representation of tear for the kind of like when, when they raise the flag and when they lower the flag, you know, when they raise the spear, when they lower the spear, when, they, when the spear is raised and when, while the spear is up, it means everybody that's here, you know, is gathering um, to be respectful, to be courteous, to be kind. Uh, it's like a grist set, you know, you're, you're all here and play nicely together sort of thing. And then the closing ceremony, the, the, the spear goes down and that would have, that would have, that happens on uh, on Sunday. But anyway, they raised the spear, opened up the event, said it's officially underway. Shadow Moon's officially underway. Um, had our dinner, and then after dinner, we sat around the community fire and had uh, a really nice lesson or discussion on on winter nights from their Godi, Jared, and their Volva, Michelle, which is Jared's uh, partner, wife, I believe, if I'm calling correctly. Um, really awesome. Again, really nice. Uh, t chance to you know sit in fellowship with people we did a drumming uh circle um had a lot of had a lot of fun with that tasted different meads um you know had drinks it was it was it was great um it was a long night saturday was the day of the ritual when they have you know a a uh they call their hell bloat so Shadamut is 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 a, is their winter nights, you know, celebration, and and hell is a focus for the ceremony uh, for the ritual later on that night. Um, and I had you know brought my attire, um, and had you know my my skull mask, uh, staff, and and stuff to really get into the whole ritual theater of it all, you know, um, and I had plans of being 100% just, you know, cool with everything, just, you know, get into my ritual attire, kind of get into a headspace where I was, you know, ready for the, for the ritual. Um, well, everything I think that led up to the ritual evening prepared me for the ritual in a way that I had not thought it, it would, you know, so, um, when we woke up Saturday morning, you know, of course we had breakfast and, um, and whatnot. And then I prepared for, um, just hanging out with people, you know, visiting, talking, chatting, had lunch later on that, that afternoon around noon or so. And then at one o'clock I had a lesson, um, uh, speech or whatever to give uh, on heathenry. So heathenry 101 was my, um, class, so to speak. I did record a good chunk of it. I am going to try and put together a video uh, to put on YouTube uh, sometime soon of what I was able to capture. Unfortunately, I didn't capture the entire duration of everything. There are segments that at the event were cut out. I'm going to try to make up for that by splicing in some content away from Shadow Moot, where I, you know, from the content that I was reading from, uh, didn't make it to the video. My, my camera cut off three different times. And, um, so, you know, it was, I got to go back, review the content and make sure that, um, what I have is, is, is going to work, but check out, you know, uh, YouTube, be sure to that, that you're subscribed and that you've got your notifications and all that turned on. So that way, when I do upload it, you'll get it. 
But um, I did that Heathenry 101 class, and then um, Patrick, our tribe's uh, law speaker, had his lesson where he presented his agromancy um, cards and, and, and system to everybody for the first time. You know, he's talked about it to to certain people like myself and, and some others um, and has been working on this system of his for, you know, the better part of 20 plus years. And the, uh, the, the, the lesson that he gave, the introduction to it all was the first time that it has been seen by like the general public, as it were, really well received. Um, a lot of people had had questions and, and, and engaged with him and, and really, you know, really, uh, really took hold of what he had to say and, and what the way he was presenting it and made it really worth his while, I feel. So I'm really happy for him on that. So after like the lessons were done, after myself and Patrick gave our, you know, dissertations or so to speak, um, I went back to the camp site where uh, my wife's in my tent was pitched and set up for my rune readings, told everybody, if you want to come down, I'll be set up down here. And, um, you know, normally with, with this type of thing, I've, I've set up in the past at other events, I've set up in relative proximity to where everybody else is, like where all the other vendors are, where everything is is happening up closer to, you know, the house or whatever on the property. Well, this time I wanted to keep away from everybody and I wanted my um, uh, rune readings to be um, without influence of, of other people and whatnot around me. Worked out really well, um, gave several rune readings that um, all of, of, of them or most of all of them had a common uh, theme. There was a lot of... Uh, a lot of controlled destruction, a lot of controlled chaos, and there, and there was a lot of ancestral connections, a lot of Hagalas and a lot of Othala um, in some of the different rune readings that I gave. Well, you know, finished up with, I think I did about five, five or six different, let's say about five different readings for different people or peoples. Um, had a really nice interaction with a young kid. He's about nine years old, I believe. Uh, his name was Wyatt, and he um, makes pens. Him and his mom have this wood engraving or wood, uh, yeah, wood engraving um, business. And he um, he makes pens. So the, the the pens are made of different kind of wood, you know. So inside of the wood pen is the pen cartridge. And so you, what you can do is you can take the pen apart and replace it the cartridge, the ink cartridge within it. And so you always have this really awesome uh, wooden pen. And he had different ones and he was showing, he came by and he's like, Hey, are you Jesse? And I said, yeah. And he's like, well, I make these pens. Um, and he you know, had different ones made of different wood. And he showed me one and it was uh, a 1200 year old um, bog oak wood pen. And I said, well, that's really nice. You know? And um, so I might come by later and whatever and buy from buy, buy one from you and, you know, ask them how much they were. And he told me, I said, okay, cool. Well, shortly thereafter, um, and this is all before the, the rune readings, by the way, this was like early Saturday morning, well, early Saturday afternoon or mid morning. He came back to me after showing me the pens and said, um, I was wondering, would you be interested in, in trading a rune reading for a pen? I was like, absolutely. You know, what about that bog oak? you know, that bog oak pen. He said, okay. And I said, listen, you just hold on to it. Don't bring it back to me yet. You just hold on to it. And when you're, when I'm ready and when I'm set up down there, you come and have your rune readings, you bring it to me as your, you know, and we can exchange it that way. And that's exactly the way it happened. You know, he came by the, the, the canopy, the little, by our tent, gave me the pen, gave him his reading. Really Ross, probably one of my favorite readings um, was, was for him. So, um, Wyatt and um, and Sarah, Sarah Engraving, Sarah's Engravings, I believe it is. Um, thank you so much for that opportunity and thank you for the pen. Um, looking forward to using it. So anyway, um, you know, after all of the readings were done, I said, okay, well, you know, it's time to go back up and get some dinner and then prepare for um, ritual. So um, I had uh, gone back up to the camp or back up to the to the grounds where everybody was eating or about to eat, uh, sat down with my wife and socialized a bit more, right? And then um, had dinner. 
sat around and I had like a, just a, you know, was it was CBD uh, gummies or whatever. And a couple of sips. And I mean, just like literally a couple little, right. Of scotch. Um, so it's getting dark now um, or it's about to get dark. And I said, I need to go down to the campsite and get my ritual stuff put together. Um, bring it back up here. So that way when they start the ritual, I'm ready to go. Well, go down there bring my stuff back up, sit down. And um, all of a sudden, man, I just start feeling not so hot. Like the feelings that I was getting were almost like I was about to pass out. Like I was, I wasn't feeling overheated, but you know how like you kind of feel like clammy and like closed off a bit when you're, when you're about to almost pass out, like when you get that almost like that, that the, the sounds, I, I remember this specifically, sound was very muffled. Like, you know, your hands are cupped over your ears and you start talking. It, it, everybody's voices sounded like that. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking around, I'm like something, something just doesn't feel right, you know? And I'm like, look at it, you know, can't be the, the CBD, you know, it wasn't that much. And it can't definitely, it's not definitely not the scotch. And I've, you know, I've, combine the two before much greater quantities and haven't had this much trouble. And I'm over here just like something just doesn't feel right. So I get up and I start walking around thinking maybe, you know, moving around, getting the blood flow will help. And I really just, it, it didn't really go away. It didn't really subside. I just kept felt feeling like I was about to pass out. Um, sound was muffled. Um, but the, the, the sound part, what was interesting was that at some points and at certain points I could hear different conversations very vividly and it wasn't like the whole conversations they were bits and pieces of the conversation that I was kind of like pulling and extracting from this muffled noise and it was almost like the, the those those bits of those sentences were being directed to me um there was like certain phrases or certain things that people were saying that um, just made it sound like they were talking to me. I think I remember hearing one person say, uh, he's, he's pretty far out there, or he's, he's, it's out there, he's out there. And I'm like, I know they weren't talking to me, because you know, I would like look over in that direction or whatever, and they were talking amongst themselves. But like certain things from like people that weren't in my proximity i could hear just sounded like they were talking to me or at me so anyway i get back up again and i was i was i was up and down sitting down standing up walking around and patrick and and uh another dear friend of ours is uh whose name is ulf i uh they're like you okay man i'm like i'm not okay and i'm like all all now at, as we are about to start ritual like i've got to get it together something's got to give here man because i'm about to walk down to this wood line for this ritual and i feel like i'm i'm about to i'm having a really hard time here just doing basic things you know basic foot in front of the other kind of stuff well um i said you know all right well enough's enough and i sit down and i put on my my skull mask and i put on my mantle and i take and i grab a hold of my staff and i put my hood on and i just sit there and i i just start to i don't know like meditate breathe a little bit i'm like Whatever's going on physically, whatever I'm feeling, whatever, whatever all this is that's that's causing me to feel this way. Um, this is how it's gonna be. And this is how I've got to go into this ritual. So let's just embrace it, you know. Let's embrace that kind of death feeling that I'm that I'm in encountering right now, right? So I have my my skull mask on and I'm really getting into that mindset and then you know next thing you know i hear you know a horn blow from um might have been greg the chieftain yeah i think it was greg he blew blew a horn and i'm like okay well now they're they're summoning people to assemble to start the ritual and give people what the expectation is and they do that and so i'm standing there and they're giving everybody instructions you know how to how to approach this the space and and the whole meet like the, the the ritual theater aspect of things you know like they really made it feel like you were walking the road to hell um and you know it's talking about how you know not everybody that goes down there returns 
you know, some people stay there. And if you are having reservations about going now, then you should stay here and, and not accompany us. Like they really made it serious. And I'm like, wow. So here I am, you know, still feeling kind of the way I'm feeling, hearing what he's saying. We start the procession. I was not like in the front of the procession, but, you know, there was Greg and there was Patrick kind of close to the time. Patrick was second to, he was like right behind Greg, like Greg led the procession down and Patrick was right in front behind him. And then there was maybe one other person, Ulf, then me and my wife behind me and so on down the line. So we, we start, you know, walking and, you know, two, two by two or, you know, abreast from each other. Um, so we're side by side walking down and, um, and I don't know, man, like the whole, like I had walked down that yard during the daytime. I've walked in that yard during the night. I've been in that rituals area where we've done things before, but walking through the yard and walking down that pathway into the, the wood line where the ritual was held, I was I did not feel like I was walking in the places that I've ever walked before. Like I felt like I was literally in the darkest and, and dimly lit pathways leading to the underworld as it were, you know, or leading to that place of rest. And it was so quiet and it was so close when we entered the ritual space where they had it all ordered off with, with fire and, and lights and stuff. And from what I remember seeing, you know, it was, it was so it didn't look like uh, the tree line. Like I said before, I've been down there, um, at, you know, at different points in time and four different rituals, and I've never seen it the way I, I saw it that night. You know, the, the the wood line to me looked like walls of a of a of an apartment building or 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 a complex, as it were, and there were lights that reminded me of windows. You know, and it, and it made me think of of windows that belonged to different ancestors homes like they were the huts or the or the halls or the the cells not the cells but like the you know the the quarters the living quarters of our all of our ancestors and i could see them in the tree line what is i don't know now as the tree line but when i'm looking there i'm like this this looks to me like almost like a royal chamber like there was fire there was um a ritual fire there there was uh, an altar there was all, all kinds of imagery that when i was in my mind's eye and in that state of mind that I was in, I looked and it looked like the, a royal chamber, you know, with smaller housings um, kind of, uh, you know, positioned throughout. So to me, I was like, I'm literally in hell right now. Like I see the halls of my ancestors and I'm, and I'm here, you know, um, it's hard to, it's hard to describe the feeling that I had, but I, I absolutely felt like I was, in Helheim. Um, and then each, you know, they, 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 they run through the ritual and, um, which I'm not going to go into to, to great details because that is, that is something that, that I feel can't be just of like, you can't do it justice by retelling the ritual. Um, but it was so powerful, so powerful guys. If you, if you are ever, again, like I said before, thinking, about coming to Shadow Moot, specifically Shadow Moot, but any other hearth hosted a event that's public. If you're ever thinking about it, definitely do it. It's worth it. But the ritual itself was was so well done, so moving, so powerful. To 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 command an audience, or to lead an audience, maybe, or or to guide people into a state of mind that puts like to be put into a state of mind like I was in. Like, yes, granted, I, there were things that I did um, in, in ways that I put myself into that frame of mind, you know, that that ritual state of mind to be ready for such a thing. But the everything else that the hearth did, um, from the procession to the ceremony to the walk back up, everything, just it was so well done, so well done. He, I mean, Jared really, Jared and, and Michelle both really did a wonderful job with leading the ceremony and having getting people involved in the ceremony and feeling and, and, and bringing that feeling to the whole uh assembly there is very inspirational you know it's like that's what a ritual feels like that's how it's properly done you know and um 
again, I'm not going to go into the details of the actual ceremony and what that was all about, but it was a proper bloat. I'll tell you that much. Um, you had that option anyway. So after the ritual, we, we come back up and then they, they have this big, again, community fire, just like it was kind of on Friday night where um, we all go and there was a mead drink. They were not drinking, but there was a mead contest. Uh, so everybody, you know, had uh, different kinds of mead that they were entering in to be judged and determine who was the best. So they had a mead contest and everybody came back around and passed bottles of mead around and drummed around the fire some more. Some of that content I've, I've posted on my YouTube channel. So if you want to catch what, what, what I was able to catch from my phone, then go ahead and check that out. And uh, yeah, man, it was just, it was such a good time. And, and the feelings that I had from when I started the ritual and went down there to when I came back, like I felt so much better coming back but the better feeling that i had was kind of like that feeling that you have when you drop something that you no longer need and it's almost like a relief you know like you feel like you've been relieved of of this burden um that's kind of how i felt you know like i felt like i was relieved of this ailment relieved of that illness relieved of some sort of sickness that i was experiencing I left that part of me in hell is, is, the, is the only thing that I've been able to come up with. You know, like I literally, I didn't just pretend that I was going to hell. You know, it wasn't just, you know, my imagination. It wasn't make-believe. That was real for me. I was there. And then a part of me stayed there. This physical form and, and the rest of, of myself came back. But that sickness, that illness, that feeling of being disoriented, sad. I remember before the ceremony, like I was, you know, I was telling you guys, I was like walking around trying to collect myself, feel better. Like I remember walking um, to this one area and I don't even, it was in the, it was in the yard, um, but I was like walking a circle and I hit this one part of the circle that I was walking in, not even really trying to walk a circle. I was just meandering about, you know, just trying to get my mind on something that I could focus on and, and not feel ill anymore. So I hit, I, I, I reached this one place on my walk around the inner yard there. And um, I had like stop and look to my left and the feeling of just tremendous pain and sorrow, like the most heart breaking sorrow that you could possibly imagine hit me like that for no reason. Like I'm walking around just kind of feeling woozy. And then all of a sudden I go, you know, I, I turn to my left and I just start crying. Like I couldn't help myself. It was, it was like just a heartbreak of pain and sorrow. So I keep walking. Actually, I think I walked behind, like I walked, I, I kind of backtracked a little bit. I'm like, I'm not going down there anymore. I'm not walking in that direction after feeling what I'm feeling. I need to figure out a different way to go. And that, that, that part of the whole thing, like the pre-ritual ritual, that, that the ceremonial aspect of me, like wandering about, figuring myself, feeling this illness, feeling that sorrow, all of that was brought down to the ritual space, brought down to hell and left there. Because when I came back up, I was feeling much better physically, um, got a chance to sit down, drum the drumming session was so intense. And again, like, like I said, guys, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't under the influence of any sort of substances that would have made what I was feeling as strong of a feeling. I was, I was, again, if you want to consider, you know, CBD and, and a couple of drinks of scotch, mildly intoxicated, right? Or, or having some sort of substance that alters your state of consciousness. If you want to call those things, that's not what made me feel the way I was feeling. And it's not what made my drum sessions feel the way I was feeling. Cause then you got to figure walking down to that ritual space, being part of the ritual, like there was a good hour or so maybe, I mean, maybe that, or maybe just time was skewed. My, my sense of time was skewed. I don't know how exactly how long we were down there for, but it felt like it was a while, you know? So if you want to make the argument that, well, the, the effects of the CBD and the scotch as little as you might've had 
you know, took effect on you. I was down there for an hour, not drinking or doing anything, just standing there. When I came back up and felt so much better and sat around the fire, the, 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 the drum sessions that I had that, that I shared with other people in, like I was zoned into it, man. Like I was, I didn't know what the people around me, what they were doing. All I could hear were the rhythm of the other drums, feeling that vibration and getting lost in a trance. And I've done drum sessions. I've done, you know, my smoke sessions. I've, I've drummed in, under the full moon. Of, of, I mean, all kinds of things that I thought was similar to the to that, or, or at least would have prepared me for that. But it didn't, boy. Like it was, I was on a different level, man, a way different level. And I think that that feeling transfers when you're in, you know, that that community sort of setting. It's contagious. You know, because when I would come back into my awareness state, not being so entranced with the with the rhythm of the drums and the fire and the the bells or the tambourines or whatever else was was going on, uh, I'd look around and I would see you know people doing their thing with the drums or whatever, and and seeing them captivated by you know whether it was the fire or the rhythm or their own thoughts or whatever, you know they they got caught up in it too. You know, and some of the pictures that were taken and captured, whether it was by myself, my wife took some really great photos. There was this one that she took of me where I was drumming in front of the fire. It's actually my social media profile picture. It's as it's if if you look at the picture, it's I'm I'm standing looking at the fire, and there is a definite feminine figure. It's almost like a woman in a dress holding up a finger, like and it's like a like like the side profile view of a woman looking at me, holding up a finger, and I'm looking at this figure, right? Um, and she's like standing there facing me, holding up what appears to be a, a, either a hand like this or a finger like this. I think it's a finger because um, like it, that to me, looking back at that was like, this was your first time. You made it. This was your first time. You, you went there. This is your first of many times. You know, so I'm sharing this, I'm sharing some of these things because the 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 effect that it had on me was so profound that I'm like, I can't not not share. Yeah, because I can't not share this. I can't keep quiet about this. I can't just, you know, keep it all to myself and not share people. Because this is so, I mean, I don't know, man. Like if I were to listen to, to someone tell a story like this, I would be blown away. I would be invigorated. I would feel renewed myself, you know, and and wanting to find ways of connecting with the community or connect, connecting with more people and doing more of the work. And it has, man, like it's, it's wild how these events can, can, can really spark something in the community. Um, we, we met a lot of new folks, you know, saw plenty of familiar faces, but met a lot of new people. One, one of which uh, actually he lives in the same town as I do. Um, and he's looking for, he's looking for something he's, he's looking for mentorship. He's looking for, um, an opportunity to prove his worth. And, um, I'm like, wow, you know, that wouldn't have happened if, if we don't go and we don't do these sorts of things and we don't, and that's, that's what I've been talking about for so long guys, you know, about how, you know, it's easy to, to sit back and listen and hear somebody say that, you know, heathenry is is where the heart is and where and it starts in the home and it starts with the hearth and you know grassroots heathenry is is the future of heathenry it's it's all well and good to hear somebody say it and be like yeah that makes sense I, that really speaks to me but it's a totally other thing man when you're living it when you're doing it when you're a part of stuff like this it's not being said just because it sounds cool guys it's being said and it's being talked about because it's the truth the proof is in the pudding dude right the 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 metal when the metal meets the meat, this is where this is where things happen at. It's not in the books. It's not in the studies. Granted, all that stuff is fun. It's 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 great conversation starters, and it's a great thing to have to contribute to the social aspects of these types of events that I'm talking about. But the growth, the activity, the building, the the 
fostering the the all of it, the growth. It it happens in person. It happens at the grassroots level. It happens in real time. It happens when you do it. You know, so you can be the most academic smarty pants out here, and if you're not living it, it's it's there's no there's no worth, or there's not as much worth. You know, worth is determined and is placed on you by your, by your people. You know, so yeah, I guess if if you're if you're uh, a teacher in the community, then your academic knowledge makes you worth a lot. So I don't mean to say that just being a, an idiot <laughs> out here and having no sort of education or knowledge or, or smarts is, is makes you more worth than a person who is, who is, you know, got a PhD or whatever. I'm not, not saying that. I guess what I'm saying is that don't get so lost in the books. Don't get so lost in the academia. Don't get so rooted in the past that you're not actually doing the things that are, are, are applicable in, in, in the modern time and in the here and now, right? That ritual, guys, on, on Saturday, probably the most profound profound ritual that I've been a part of, one of the most at least, aside from one or two from my own um, tribes, events, you know, stuff that we've had. But this one was incredible. Just the, the amount of work, the amount of effort that, that went into it, it was palpable. You, you could tell. You know, they didn't just pull this out of their asses. They didn't just come up with this that weekend and be like, oh, I'm going to download this article and read about this story. And then, boom, here we go. No, this was this is deeply rooted in, in their traditions. They've done such a good job at, at creating something for themselves, living it and sharing it with the community. Really, really good stuff. So hail to the Raven Moon Hearth. You know, congratulations on another successful Shadow Moot year. Um, I can't wait for next year. I'm very excited about next uh, Shadow Moot and hoping to attend more uh, Hearth events that are open. And uh, use that inspiration. Use that. You know, use those times to to do stuff our own, on our own. Do stuff ourselves for hilarity folk. You know, make things happen in that way. Um, so yeah, like Saturday night was great. We, we all did that and then drummed for a while and came up Sunday morning after a pretty good night's rest. You know, I was exhausted boys. I, uh, <laughs> after that whole ritual and, and just drumming, I mean, I was, I was spiritually exhausted. I was, I was wore out and slept good came out Sunday morning, had breakfast, did the closing ceremony. It just barely started to rain as we tore down our and, and started like leaving. Like we had torn down our camp, packed everything up. We were heading down the road and then it started to sprinkle. And then we, we hit rain on the way home. The whole weekend though, perfect weather, beautiful sunny day on Saturday. Um, Friday was great too. Like the, the, the Friday th during the day and then Saturday was phenomenal it was it was it was great um then then sunday you know woke up and it was cloudy and of course it rained but yeah the, the the timing of it all was perfect you know um didn't have any rain to deal with for setup didn't have any rain to deal with for for tearing down had a lot of good conversation a lot of fun good good times man good times but yeah that's about that's about all there is to it um like I said before, what, what I was able to, to get from my Heathenry 101 class, I should be working on that probably this weekend. Um, I'm going to try to get it up beforehand, but just like I said, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Turn on, turn on all your notifications, and I'll uh, share it all on my social medias um, about when it's going to go up. But I do have some work to do for it or on it because, again, like I said, the, the video cut out three different times, so I got to rewatch the content and see, well, what was left out. And that way it, it kind of makes some, some sense and I can fill in some of those gaps a bit, but yeah, that's, that, that's coming up here soon. Um, and yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that, that retelling of that recap of, of shadow Moot and that it is, has given you, if you had any doubts, if you thought, well, is it worth it? You know, I live X amount of miles away, X amount of hours away, you know, t distance, whatever I'm telling you guys, you got a whole year to plan for this. Do it. It'll be right around this time of year next year, somewhere in the same ballpark or vicinity. They do it, you know, 
around the same time within a week or two every year. Um, and, and, and if, you know, you're not on Facebook um, and you're listening to my podcast, you can always uh, stay tuned for me here because I'll be talking about it next year too, because I already am planning to, to be there and attending and, and doing what we did last year again. So we're doing what we did this year again, next year, I should say. So make those plans, make it so do it. You, you won't regret it. I promise. Um, but yes, thank you all for, for tuning in and, and listening today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, follow, share, and subscribe. It helps me and it helps the algorithm figure out that, you know, this is something that, uh, needs to be distributed and shared all the way around. So definitely engage with the content in any way that you can. If you want to check out other ways that you can support this podcast and Midgard Musings, check out the Linktree link that is annotated in the show notes and description of the podcast or the video, or wherever it is that you're um, catching all this. Um, and yeah, that, that, that's just about it. So once again, thank you so much for all of your support. And until we see each other again, May the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you.